problem gambling is an urge to gamble continuously despite harmful negative consequences or a desire to stop. Problem gambling is often defined by whether harm is experienced by the gambler or others, rather than by the gambler's behavior. Severe problem gambling may be diagnosed as clinical pathological gambling if the gambler meets certain criteria. Pathological gambling is a common disorder that is associated with both social and family costs. The DSM-5 has reclassified the condition as an addictive disorder, with sufferers exhibiting many similarities to those who have substance addictions. The term gambling addiction has long been used in the recovery movement. Pathological gambling was long considered by the American Psychiatric Association to be an impulse control disorder rather than an addiction. However, data suggest a closer relationship between pathological gambling and substance use disorders than exists between PG and obsessive compulsive disorder. Definition Research by governments in Australia led to a universal definition for that country which appears to be the only research-based definition not to use diagnostic criteria. Problem gambling is characterized by many difficulties in limiting money and or time spent on gambling which leads to adverse consequences for the gambler, others, or for the community. The University of Maryland Medical Center defines pathological gambling as being unable to resist impulses to gamble, which can lead to severe personal or social consequences. Most other definitions of problem gambling can usually be simplified to any gambling that causes harm to the gambler or someone else in any way. However, these definitions are usually coupled with descriptions of the type of harm or the use of diagnostic criteria. The DSMV has since reclassified pathological gambling as gambling disorder, and has listed the disorder under substance-related and addictive disorders rather than impulse control disorders. This is due to the symptomatology of the disorder resembling an addiction not dissimilar to that of substance abuse. In order to be diagnosed, an individual must have at least four of the following symptoms in a 12-month period, needs to gamble with increasing amounts of money in order to achieve the desired excitement, is restless or irritable when attempting to cut down or stop gambling, has made repeated unsuccessful efforts to control, cut back, or stop gambling, is often preoccupied with gambling often gambles when feeling distressed, after losing money gambling, often returns another day to get even, lies to conceal the extent of involvement with gambling, has jeopardized or lost a significant relationship, job, education or career opportunity because of gambling, relies on others to provide money to relieve desperate financial situations caused by gambling. History and Biology, according to the Illinois Institute for Addiction Recovery. Evidence indicates that pathological gambling is an addiction similar to chemical addiction. It has been observed that some pathological gamblers have lower levels of norepinephrine than normal gamblers. According to a study conducted by Alec Roy, formerly at the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism, norepinephrine is secreted under stress, arousal, or thrill, so pathological gamblers gamble to make up for their underdosage. According to a report from Harvard Medical School's Division on Addictions, there was an experiment constructed where test subjects were presented with situations where they could win, lose, or break even in a casino-like environment. Subjects' reactions were measured using fMRI, a neuroimaging technique. And according to Hans Breiter, co-director of the Motivation and Emotion Neuroscience Center at Massachusetts General Hospital, Monetary reward in a gambling-like experiment produces brain activation very similar to that observed in a cocaine addict receiving an infusion of cocaine. Studies have compared pathological gamblers to substance addicts, concluding that addicted gamblers display more physical symptoms during withdrawal. Deficiencies in serotonin might also contribute to compulsive behavior, including a gambling addiction. A limited study was presented at a conference in Berlin, suggesting opioid release differs in problem gamblers form the general population, but in a very different way from alcoholics or other substance abusers. Equals controversy over biomedical model equals, some medical authors suggest that the biomedical model of problem gambling may be unhelpful because it focuses only on individuals. These authors point out that social factors may be a far more important determinant of gambling behavior than brain chemicals and they suggest that a social model may be more useful in understanding the issue. For example, 
an apparent increase in problem gambling in the UK may be better understood as a consequence of changes in legislation which came into force in 2007 and enabled casinos, bookmakers, and online betting sites to advertise on TV and radio for the first time and which eased restrictions on the opening of betting shops and online gambling sites. Equals relation to other problems equals, pathological gambling is similar to many other impulse control disorders such as kleptomania. According to evidence from both community and clinic-based studies, individuals who are pathological gamblers are highly likely to exhibit other psychiatric problems concurrently, including substance use disorders, mood and anxiety disorders, or personality disorders. Pathological gambling shows several similarities with substance abuse. There is a partial overlap in diagnostic criteria. Pathological gamblers are also likely to abuse alcohol and other drugs. The telescoping phenomenon reflects the rapid development from initial to problematic behavior in women compared with men. This phenomenon was initially described for alcoholism, but it has also been applied to pathological gambling. Also biological data provide a support for a relationship between pathological gambling and substance abuse. In a 1995 survey of 184 Gamblers Anonymous members in Illinois, Illinois State Professor Henry Lesieux found that 56% admitted to some illegal act to obtain money to gamble. 58% admitted they wrote bad checks, while 44% said they stole or embezzled money from their employer. Compulsive gambling can affect personal relationships. In a 1991 study of relationships of American men, it was found that 10% of compulsive gamblers had been married more than twice. Only 2% of men who did not gamble were married more than twice. According to statistics by the BGM, families of problem gamblers are more likely to experience child abuse or other forms of domestic violence. Suicide rates A gambler who does not receive treatment for pathological gambling when in his or her desperation phase may contemplate suicide. Problem gambling is often associated with increased suicidal ideation and attempts compared to the general population. Early onset of problem gambling increases the lifetime risk of suicide. However, gambling-related suicide attempts are usually made by older people with problem gambling. Both comorbid substance use and comorbid mental disorders increase the risk of suicide in people with problem gambling. A 2010 Australian hospital study found that 17% of suicidal patients admitted to the Alfred Hospital's emergency department were problem gamblers. In the United States, a report by the National Council on Problem Gambling showed approximately one in five pathological gamblers attempt suicide. The council also said that suicide rates among pathological gamblers were higher than any other addictive disorder. David Phillips a sociologist from the University of California San Diego, found visitors to in residents of gaming communities experience significantly elevated suicide levels. According to him, Las Vegas, the largest gaming market in the United States, displays the highest levels of suicide in the nation, both for residents of Las Vegas and for visitors to that setting. In Atlantic City, the second largest gaming market, he found abnormally high suicide levels for visitors and residents appeared only after gambling casinos were opened. Mechanism, the findings in one review indicated the sensitization theory is responsible. Dopamine discalation syndrome has been observed in the aforementioned theory in people with regards to such activities as gambling. Diagnosis, the most common instrument used to screen for probable pathological gambling behavior is the South Oaks Gambling Screen developed by Lesueur and Bloom at the South Oaks Hospital in New York City. In recent years the use of SOGS has declined due to a number of criticisms, including that it overestimates false positives. The DSMIV diagnostic criteria presented as a checklist is an alternative to SOGS, it focuses on the psychological motivations underpinning problem gambling and was developed by the American Psychiatric Association. It consists of 10 diagnostic criteria. One frequently used screening measure based upon the DSM-IV criteria is the National Opinion Research Center DSM screen for gambling problems. The Canadian Problem Gambling Inventory is another newer assessment measure. The Problem Gambling Severity Index which focuses on the harms associated with problem gambling, 
is composed of nine items from the longer CPGI. Treatment Most treatment for problem gambling involves counseling, step-based programs, self-help, peer support, medication, or a combination of these. However, no one treatment is considered to be most efficacious and no medications have been approved for the treatment of pathological gambling by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. Only one treatment facility has been given a license to officially treat gambling as an addiction, and that was by the state of Virginia. Gamblers Anonymous is a commonly used treatment for gambling problems. Modeled after Alcoholics Anonymous, GA uses a 12-step model that emphasizes a mutual support approach. There are three inpatient treatment centers in North America. One form of counseling, cognitive behavioral therapy has been shown to reduce symptoms and gambling-related urges. This type of therapy focuses on the identification of gambling-related thought processes, mood and cognitive distortions that increase ONEA Euro unregistered trademark S vulnerability to out-of-control gambling. Additionally, CBT approaches frequently utilize skill-building techniques geared toward relapse prevention, assertiveness and gambling refusal, problem-solving and reinforcement of gambling inconsistent activities and interests. As to behavioral treatment, some recent research supports the use of both activity scheduling and desensitization in the treatment of gambling problems. In general, Behavior analytic research in this area is growing there is evidence that the SSRI paroxetine is efficient in the treatment of pathological gambling. Additionally, for patients suffering from both pathological gambling and a comorbid bipolar spectrum condition, sustained release lithium has shown efficacy in a preliminary trial. The opioid antagonist drug nalmethine has also been trialed quite successfully for the treatment of compulsive gambling. Equals step-based programs equals, other step-based programs are specific to gambling and generic to healing addiction, creating financial health, and improving mental wellness. Commercial alternatives that are designed for clinical intervention, using the best of health science and applied education practices, have been used as patient-centered tools for intervention since 2007. They include measured efficacy and resulting recovery metrics equals motivational interviewing equals motivational interviewing is one of the treatments of compulsive gambling the motivational interviewing's basic goal is promoting readiness to change through thinking and resolving mixed feelings avoiding aggressive confrontation argument labeling blaming and direct persuasion the interviewer supplies empathy and advice to compulsive gamblers who define their own goal the focus is on promoting freedom of choice and encouraging confidence in the ability to change. Equals peer support equals, a growing method of treatment is peer support. With the advancement of online gambling, many gamblers experiencing issues use various online peer support groups to aid their recovery. This protects their anonymity while allowing them to attempt recovery on their own, often without having to disclose their issues to loved ones equals self-help equals, research into self-help for problem gamblers has shown benefits. A study by Wendy Slutsk of the University of Missouri concluded one-third of pathological gamblers overcome it by natural recovery. Equals impact equals, according to the Productivity Commission's 2010 final report into gambling, the social cost of problem gambling is close to $4.7 billion a year. Some of the harms resulting from problem gambling include depression, suicide, lower work productivity, job loss, relationship breakdown, crime and bankruptcy. A survey conducted in 2008 found that the most common motivation for fraud was problem gambling, with each incident averaging a loss of $1.1 million. Prevalence equals Europe equals, in Europe, the rate of problem gambling is typically 0.5 to 3%. The British Gambling Prevalence Survey 2007, conducted by the United Kingdom Gambling Commission, found approximately 0.6% of the adult population had problem gambling as sways a euro the same percentage as in 1999. The highest prevalence of problem gambling was found among those who participated in spread betting, fixed odds betting terminals and betting exchanges. In Norway a December 2007 study showed the amount of present problem gamblers was 0.7%. Equals North America equals, in the United States, 
the percentage of pathological gamblers was 0.6%, and the percentage of problem gamblers was 2.3% 2 in 2008. Studies commissioned by the National Gambling Impact Study Commission Act has shown the prevalence rate ranges from 0.1% to 0.6%. Nevada has the highest percentage of pathological gambling. A 2002 report estimated 2.2 to 3.6% of Nevada residents over the age of 18 could be called problem gamblers. Also, 2.7 to 4.3% could be called probable pathological gamblers. According to a 1997 meta-analysis by Harvard Medical School's Division on Addictions, 1.1% of the adult population of the United States and Canada could be called pathological gamblers. A 1996 study estimated 1.2 to 1.9% of adults in Canada were pathological. In Ontario, a 2006 report showed 2.6% of residents experienced moderate gambling problems and 0.8% had severe gambling problems. In Quebec, an estimated 0.8% of the adult population were pathological gamblers in 2002. Although most who gamble do so without harm, approximately 6 million American adults are addicted to gambling. Signs of a gambling problem include, using income or savings to gamble while letting bills go unpaid, repeated, unsuccessful attempts to stop gambling, chasing losses, losing sleep over thoughts of gambling, arguing with friends or family about gambling behavior, feeling depressed or suicidal because of gambling losses. Equals Oceania equals, both casinos and poker machines in pubs and clubs facilitate problem gambling in Australia. The building of new hotels and casinos has been described as one of the most active construction markets in Australia. For example, AUD $860 million was allocated to rebuild and expand a star complex in Sydney. A 2010 study, conducted in the Northern Territory by researchers from the Australian National University and Southern Cross University, found that the proximity of a person's residence to a gambling venue is significant in terms of prevalence. Harmful gambling in the study was prevalent among those living within 100 metres of any gambling venue and was over 50% higher than among those living 10 kilometers from a venue. The study's data stated. Specifically, people who lived 100 meters from their favorite venue visited an estimated average of 3.4 times per month. This compared to an average of 2.8 times per month for people living 1 kilometer away, and 2.2 times per month for people living 10 kilometers away. According to the Productivity Commission's 2010 report into gambling, 0.5% to 1% of the Australian adult population suffered with significant problems resulting from gambling. A further 1.4% to 2.1% of the Australian adult population experienced moderate risks making them likely to be vulnerable to problem gambling. Estimates show that problem gamblers account for an average of 41% of the total gaming machine spending. See also, Gambler's Lament, an ancient poem about gambling. Gambling Commission, GAM Care, Gaming Law, National Council on Problem Gambling, National Council on Problem Gambling, Problem Gambling Foundation of New Zealand. References External links, Gamblers Anonymous, National Council on Problem Gambling, Gamblers Help Southern, Australia, National Centre for Responsible Gaming, Know the Odds Gambling Resources, Contributions of Mathematics in Problem Gambling.